complicate it, but sometimes right. we have to tell people that we have to stop it. Yeah, if you want to stop at 20, <laughs> that's fine, too. My, my time and my whatever I did was limited, so okay. I ended the war and came home. <laughs> you did your job. <laughs> Are we ready, Barbara? We're ready, dear. Okay. And if we could start today and you tell us your name and your rank, where you served in the service. My name is Anna K. Bell, K is for Catherine. My maiden name was Malad that time, and uh, I was a general duty nurse so in the Carl Hospital in Cleveland, Ohio, and then the Station Hospital in the Philippines. And what time period did you serve? Um, 45 and 46. When you went into the service, were you married at that time? No, I was single. And uh, at the time that you entered, what were the circumstances for you entering? Oh. Patriotic birth that just sent you off. And I finished nurses training late in uh, 44, so I had that in mind even while I was in nurses training. Did you have any leeway as far as uh, what type of unit you would serve with? That was my choice. Uh, I was a, considered a volunteer. And what was your average day like in the service? Um, the beginning was training, physical training, and uh, procedures. And when we went to Cleveland, we were on general duty, and there was the, uh, I think they called it a general hospital. So a lot of wounded came back from other areas to there. Uh, we worked 12 hour night shifts, and we knew that's what I got. And uh, a lot of general nursing care. It was a time when penicillin was at its best. And those were uh, medications that were given to intramuscularly, so they were given about every three hours. So it was an ongoing thing every three hours. And were most of the people that you saw, uh, you said you had a lot of wounded yes. military personnel. But did you see a lot of serious injuries, or did they come to your hospital first? No, they did not. I don't really know the name of the station they would have come to first. They came to ours to be, they were transferred usually back to the area that was close to their homes. And uh, I worked on an orthopedic floor, so there were a lot of broken bones and uh, wounds that were infected and physical care that was. Did you work somewhat in rehabilitation in that field? No, it was mostly uh, to get them through the period of infection, or if they had that, and uh, prepared it for whatever was going to be next. Did people stay a long time at your hospital? Uh, longer than I did. I left there when I went overseas, so they, a lot of them were there when I got there, a lot of them were there when I left. Did you request to go overseas also? Yes. Uh, how long were you overseas? I think six months. How did that differ from your work here in Cleveland? Oh, entirely different surroundings and environment. It was entirely different. A tent hospital. Um, not wounded in action, mostly ill. And the hospital had been first on the island of Mindora. That's where I went first. And they closed that. Philippines had been liberated. And uh, we moved to Luzon, a tent in Luzon. There were um, a lot of tropical diseases that being treated. So there's very few wounded there. Um, did you receive any of the people that were involved in the Baton March? No, I think they all been sent home. Um, yeah. So uh, you were in the Southern Pacific area, and then uh, during that time, were, was it a winding down period of the war? Well, the, the atomic bomb had not been dropped yet. That was in August, I believe. But after that, we felt it was winding. Now, we were issued winter clothing, preparing for an invasion of Japan. We had tropical clothing where we were, and that never came about. Did you uh, think that you might be sent to Japan? Was that a that was, possibility? That was, we, we figured that out from the heavy clothing that we were issued. All right, and then now how about other family members? Did you have other family members who were 
each other? I had a brother that was an island away from me, and I never got to see him. So um, that's something we talk about a lot. Yeah, he felt that I was more able to get to see him than he was to see me. So was he army? Yeah, he was army. So the, just the two of you in your family serving? Yes, I had brother-in-laws that had not. And I had a brother that went to Korea when I got home, so it was not the Korean War, it was just before that. And what rank did you reach in the service? I went in a second lieutenant, came out a second lieutenant. Okay. Uh, being a, an officer, were you given a, a few more privileges than some of the others? Oh, I thought we did, and it didn't make me feel exactly good. As far as better accommodations? No, the accommodations were tent. Leaking tents. Um, I think they were pretty good at it. What were the, uh, you were there, you said, um, in the summertime, you started in the summer, went into the winter? Is that? Well, it would have been winter in the Philippines. It was still. Still. Uh, that was there over the holidays. So the main uh, climate conditions were just rainy and rainy. Did you have any close friends that you were able to uh, keep contact with? I didn't know until we came over, on, that we came from uh, San Diego to the Philippines on the hospital ship. It was all nurses on that. And uh, one day I heard some voice that sounded familiar, and it was a girl I'd been in nurses training with. So we had, we had a good reunion. Now how many were in your unit that you worked with day to day? And then you, what other type of personnel did you work with on a regular basis? Oh, we didn't call them corner. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, and the doctors, um, technicians for x-ray and all that. When someone had to leave your facility and go to a, a more involved center, where were they sent? They probably went from where we were to Manila and probably by plane back to the United States. Um, as far as your personal life, you said you were a single woman. Did, were you able to receive mail on a regular yes. basis and all yes. of that? So I, I wasn't aware we could bring things, but I had a beautiful stack of letters that my family saved. And uh, I was real glad that they had because a lot of it I'd forgotten what I'd written about. And then um, you said that you went in, you volunteered, and. Were there any things that really stand out in your memory, uh, a thing or an event that was important to you? Things that I remember, uh, come back and think that's the aging process. Um, yeah, yes, about my being single. Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of boyfriends, but I had one from the United States that just happened to be in my era, area, and he came uh, to visit one day, and I got permission to go out with him the next day, which would have been probably going to the village or something. He didn't show up. He didn't show up. <laughs> and, I, and I felt so bad. It's, it was something that happened with his unit that he couldn't. But I felt such a loss that we didn't have that time together. And of course, we saw each other when we got back, but it would have, it would have been so exciting to have a boyfriend <laughs> we brought from home. Now, uh, were you ever under immediate danger, or did you feel that you were under immediate danger? No. We were issued um, battle stars, but that was because of the area we were in, not that we had battle wounded or anything. Um, there was a concern, yes, there were prisoners being, or Japanese prisoners being found in, in the fields and brought into the hospital. And, um, they would be on Somebody be guarding them all the time. I mean, we were so sick that we were to care of them. Do you remember some of the events that were going on in the surrounding areas while you were serving? Can you recall? Not war wise. I remember that so many of the uh, men were counting their points to get home. <coughs> some of them had even been in the European theater. 
specific to your county that points to your home, which is where you get out. Uh, the best of the young men return home, or a lot of them return back to active duty and active age. I think they return home to the civilian life. Okay. Is there something um, that you would relate to your military experience as? Did you have an overall positive feeling or a negative feeling about your experience? I mean, positive. In what ways? Uh, the friendships and the fact that whether it was thought of as anything to help him, the more we felt like we were doing what we could do. And uh, still keep in contact with some of the girls that I was with. Many have died because some are still there. What's important for us to know about that, historically or personally? What's, what is an important part of that? I want to go back to a period because before I even got out of nurses' training that they were calling for more nurses. And they were entering three classes a year. Shorties was a lot like it is now. They started the cadet nurse corps. A lot of those nurses did go in, even though the war was over, they went in for a period of time. Um, patriotism was strong wherever you were. Friendships lasted a long time. When you came back, did it seem very different to you when you came back to the States? Only having been gone over a while, I didn't think it would, but it, it was. Mm -hmm. Styles. Oh, dressing the general public. Yeah, that um, desire to wear civilian clothes was. My family did send me some. We weren't permitted to wear it, but sometimes we would. Like a blouse, something that would add a little feminine touch. And were you welcomed home? Was your, your service was appreciated? I thought so. How long after you were home did you marry? How, how long was it? Um, married in 48. Okay. So, and then did you work in nursing when you came yes. back? Have you been working in nursing for a long time? Until I retired, yes. Sir. In the Miami Valley here? Yes. Where did you work? I worked at uh, St. Elizabeth, which is closed, but the Miami Valley Hospital, which was main hospital now mm -hmm. and also work at the state mental institution. Is there anything and the VA. The VA. VA. Is there anything that we have overlooked that you would like to bring forward in, in Oh, oh I have to talk about how homesick I am. Okay. Oh terribly homesick. And there's nothing nothing that can change it. Um, came from a large family of eleven brothers and sisters I knew in England they were all gathered. your parents uh, send you pictures of the events or oh, able to yes. do that? My parents were uh, both German immigrants and their uh, the advice was, you know, do what you have to do, what you feel you have to do, but they weren't uh, wanting anyone to go off. <laughs> they were very supportive. Big family celebration when I got them. And what else, what else is it that we need to tell the public about this time oh. of history? We did some things that well, this is not the public needs to know, but I ought to mention that we did some things that uh, I would never have known about. And we went to a leper colony. The whole island was called Pelion, was where they'd sent the lepers that were in the Philippines. I don't know how long, probably the beginning during the war. There was a whole island that was always on that was lepers. And uh, when I came home, I was going to take care of all the lepers where it's sort of disease faded out here in the United States, but it's prevalent all over now. Did you have to take any precautions to go there? Uh, no. Same as here, wore 
discussion and all that. And, uh, years later, we were on a, um, my husband and I were on an elder hostel in Israel. And we visited a family um, that had immigrated to Israel from America. And uh, in talking, the man was a, a doctor. And in our visit, we found out that he had been on the island of Korea. Sort of doing research in that because they were getting so many people from other countries that were in Israel that were immigrating to Israel with him. So, so it came around to be a part of my life again. Okay, and then uh, just coming back home with Ben, and you're married and you had a family. And how many children? You have four sons. Four yes. sons, and now we have ten grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband died. In December 2000. And, uh, I volunteer and I keep active myself. And are there any things that you would like to say for the benefit of your children, your grandchildren, anything about your time in the service or in the military service? Oh, I don't know if they've learned it all from us by now or not. They know that their dad and I both were very proud to have been able to serve. And certainly don't want them to ever have to do that. And none of them have. I do have a granddaughter who's in the Peace Corps, so she's all somewhat that way. Did you say your husband also served? Yes, he was an army officer. And what did he do? He was uh, in the 30th, high of 37th Division. He was in the Asiatic Pacific Theater, but not in the area that I was. And I didn't meet him until I got home. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Not that I can think of. I probably will when I leave. Um, I just sort of felt honored to be able to do that. I'm honored to have you. Thank you. Okay. Today is November the 5th, 2002, and this will end our interview with Andrew. Thank you. Don't get up yet. I want Maggie to come in and take us uh, still.